Let's just get this out of the way right up front. I need God to be the strength of my life. Wisdom is good, common sense is good, practical understanding is good, but I need what God gives me as well. Because He's the source of my strength and stability. How about you? God is amazing. Worshiping Him is, is part of that amazing. There's something about worship that just cleans you out. It kind of purifies. And we come in with all of our stuff, and I know you all came from perfect environments with perfect kids and parents and everything, so no drama today. But we need God. We've got an hour and a half inside this room, His house, to come in contact with His Spirit. And we need it. We need it. We need it. Because every day, every day I have a chance to represent something outside these doors. And without God, I will not represent the right thing, I guarantee you. I love walking into an attitude, an atmosphere of worship. Because it's real. It's real. It's real. And I love the fact that everybody worships differently and it's all good. We don't all have to jump and shout. We don't all have to sit and stare. We can worship any way we want. And that's awesome. Because God created you. God created you. Say, God created me. In his image. So that means we're all equal. He loves us all the same. And he embraces us all the same. That's a huge piece. When we finally realize that God loves us, he created us, he made us. We are his children, son or daughters of the most high God. We can begin to accept ourselves a little bit better. Because there are only two of you in the room who are perfect. And I'm scared to touch you. We are uh, starting the month of faith today. I have some guests I'm going to introduce in a minute. But we're starting the month of faith today. And, and I should have seen this coming. I'm not the brightest bulb on the tree at points. But I should have seen this coming and I, and I didn't. And the month of faith is an annual June thing for us. If you're visiting, uh, that's part of our June. Uh, if, you're, if you're not, you remember it. And... Uh, so a few days ago, a few days ago, I was going through what I normally do, you know, which is sometimes wonderful, sometimes horrible. It's just a mix of everything and just daily life. And I, and I did something. I lifted up something and moved something, and my back said, we're not cooperating this time. We're not joining you. And so it was one of those deals, and right now, it's not as bad, but it was one of those deals where if you had back trouble, you understand it. Putting on your shoes and socks is like traveling into a room of hell. And you drop things when your back is hurt. And you have to hold that chin up. Try to find them. Because if you bend, it's over. And here's, here's what's crazy. Yesterday was bad. Last night was bad. Uh, and I literally thought, okay, I can't. I'm not going to be able to do this. I have responsibilities. I don't like to not follow through if I can at all help it, but I'm thinking, okay, Pastor Kevin, I need to text you and tell you to be ready to preach, and I didn't. I didn't text him because I refused to give in to it, but it was bad last night, but this morning, here's what's crazy. This morning, I got up, and I, I thought, okay, I'm just putting sweats on because I, I can't even put real clothes on today, so I'm putting sweats on, and, uh, and I, went, I went to the net one level higher than sweats, so... This, I did dress up for you. And so, thank you so much. But, um, so, I got here, you know, getting in the car is not fun. Bending that head down, you know, all of that. Got here, went through my morning, my Sunday morning routine. And in the month of faith, 
It's really strange because I pray for other people, but sometimes I forget to pray for my own needs. Does anybody understand that? It's like if you're sick, Dave, you know, you had a rough week, buddy. You went through some stuff this week, came out like a warrior. I promise you, you did. But um, I can pray for you, and I did a number of times this week, called out your name, but I kind of forget to pray for myself sometimes. And I might have whispered it one time, you know, God, just give me a little reprieve if you can, because uh, I do believe in healing, but probably more for you than me for whatever reason. And so I got here, started going over my material, which uh, is a good thing and a bad thing, and praying and, and trying to get, you know, I have to rededicate my, my life to Christ every Sunday morning so I can present to you a Christian man. And so uh, I go through that routine, the cleansing process every Sunday morning. And so I was going through my, my ritualistic cleansing, and, uh, and all of a sudden I realized my back doesn't hurt. And, and I can tell you, I can tell you, because this is the way ministry goes and presentation goes. Anything you put out there, you've got to back up. So that's just the way it goes. And so uh, I should have seen it coming that I, something would happen weird. Uh, it did. But I got a reprieve, and I'm guessing this afternoon or tonight I'm going to be in a lot of pain. But right now, right now I'm okay. So I'll take that. And I'm, I know I'm a, little, I'm a little too transparent with you. I take abuse for that. Uh, people, some people love it. Some people don't like it. I get talked about because I say too many crazy things to you. But I want to be real, and you know why? Because at some point, you're going to see me on the news, and they're going to say, preacher, local pastor went crazy at stoplight, or on I-70, and I want you to be able to say, that's my boy right there. That's my guy. That's my boy right there. He told us, he, he told us it would happen. He, he's been telling us for years, that's my guy. That's my dude right there. Thank you, and I love you as well. But it's, uh, it's, it's, it's crazy how God works as a thread through our life. It just is. Yours, mine, you have your stories, I have mine. It's, uh, it's, it's just crazy. And, uh, and then you know, once in a while you get refocused and you realize, you know, this I didn't see it as God, but this is actually God. Uh, destiny, in my opinion, is God. Uh, calling is God. And some people don't see it as that, but, but I see it as that because it's internal and it's innate. We have some guests with us this morning that I want to welcome. Um, so happy to have uh, Miss or the Honorable Jolie Justice with us. Uh, let's give her a big hand. Give her a big welcome. Big welcome. We'll call her Miss Justice. Um, she has some friends with her, one of which is uh, Jermaine Reed, who's a good friend of us, a good friend of Sheffield. Mr. Jermaine Reed, we're always glad when you drop in on us. Thank you for representing us so well for so many years. Uh, Ms. Jolie Justice is a mayoral candidate, and I just want to say to you, ma'am, thank you for valuing Thank you for valuing Sheffield enough to ask us to, if you could be here and show up. Thank you so much. I can't tell you how much that means to me. That says a lot. We're very interested in our community. We're very involved in our community and our city, and we want to be. And whatever your position is in city or local, state, federal, we have to support and try to encourage and somehow uh, help lead from the ground up the people who lead us. So we support those who lead us, and we also need to be connected to our city, and we desire to be. I go and represent you, Sheffield, at anything civil that I'm invited to, council meetings, community events, courtroom occasionally, get to represent you there. But it's, uh, it's awesome to be here, and thank you, and we... Uh, if you end up being our mayor, which you have at least a 50% chance of. <laughs> if you end up being our mayor, we support you, we love you, we encourage you, and we, as a church family, will be praying for you. 
And we'll do that anyway, even if you're not the mayor. How about that? We only love you if you win. That's pretty ugly and probably pretty accurate. So we're, we're, into, uh, we're into the month of faith, as I have uh, so delicately displayed. Hebrews chapter 11. I'm going to look at a couple of scriptures very quickly. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Faith is, faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. Through their faith, the people in days of old, the people we read about in the Word of God, the people in the days of old earned good reputation. On down to verse 6, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Let's go back to chapter 10 and the author of Hebrews, who no matter what anybody tells you, we're not absolutely certain who that is. People will claim different authors, but we're not certain of, of who it is. Verse 35 do not throw away this confident trust, this faith in God. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance, which also is faith, is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that He has promised. Say the word then. Then. When we do this, then, say it with me again, then we will receive His promises. That's the, the linkage in the chain. The faith chapter, or most all of the people mentioned in chapter 11 of Hebrews, which is known as the faith chapter, all of them went through times of doubting and questioning God. Some of them went, went against God's direction, and they are still heroes of faith. What that tells us is, in spite of ourselves, we can still be heroes of faith. You can still be a hero of faith in your own world, in your own circle, in your own household, in your own office, in your own school, in your own community. You can still be a hero of faith even though you say, I'm not Moses, I'm not Abraham, I'm not any of these people. Well, they were more like you than you probably realize. I'm going to give you three things regarding faith. Number one, faith is, faith is much more than a feeling. It's much more than a desire. It's acting, and it's been said by many people, so this is not original with me. Faith is acting like God is telling the truth. That's worth remembering. You living out faith and believing is acting like God's word and God is telling the truth. See, it's a lifestyle connected to purpose. Being aligned with God. That's faith. We see it as, as a single act. Oh, here's an act of faith. Oh, that was a move of faith. What an, act, what an incredible act of faith that was. No, faith is more of a lifestyle than a moment. Faith is what we become after and what we receive and what's acted on after, after we've already made decisions to be connected to the purpose that God has for us, aligned with God, and living the lifestyle that He's called us to. It's only as strong as what we have faith in. We can only do so much. A little faith, and this is where the Word of God speaks great truth, a little faith in the right thing causes great things to happen. That's why it says the faith, the grain, the, gra the mustard seed is the smallest seed. Uh, you probably know that. A mustard seed is the smallest seed we know of. The Word of God tells us, the New Testament tells us, faith as a grain of a mustard seed one element of a mustard seed can cause everything to change in front of you. So a little faith in the right thing can bring great results. And in the same way, a lot of faith in the wrong thing can bring no results. We can have all the faith in the world. That's why it's not just an act. We can have all the faith in the world about the wrong thing. I can believe all week long. I can even call you and have you pray with me. And believe with me, I'm going to start putting water in my car rather than gas. It's going to save me money. It's going to be more practical. It's more available. I have it in my home. 
I'm going to do this. I'm going to use water, and I've been praying, and I'm acting on faith, and I believe it's going to happen. I believe, will you believe with me? Sure, I'll believe with you. So we will pray together. Let's join hands because we know great things happen when you join hands. So let's join hands, and we'll pray, and we'll believe water. Water will make my car move. God, allow water to drive my car. You can pray about that all year long. You can have all the faith in the world, but because you're having faith in the wrong thing, it's probably not going to happen. So a lot of faith in the wrong thing, all the great energy in the wrong thing is not going to produce the right results, whereas a little bit of faith, a little bit of faith in the right thing can produce life-changing results. It's not just what you believe, it's how you live. It's you connected to the purpose that God has for you. It's you connected, let's go back a few months, to destiny. It's you connected to what God is calling you to be and who he's calling you to be. So faith is more than a feeling. Number two, faith will. Faith will produce in us if we stay with it. It begins to produce out of how we live and how we function and how we see. It changes our heart. So much of who we are comes out of our heart. So much of what we do, good, bad, ugly, comes out of our heart. And our heart begins to change when we make faith a part of our life and we understand it's my daily life. Verse 36, let's go back to chapter 10. Verse 36 says this, faith, patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has for you. If you do this, then after. See, it's an after. We want it before. Okay, God, if you get me out of this. Most of us have had a policeman behind us, a cop behind us. And, you, and when I, anytime I see a cop pull in behind me, I get nervous. It goes way back to my childhood. <laughs> I get nervous as soon as I see it. I will turn the radio down. I will change the environment. I will, go two, I will go two and ten on the wheel. Try to look pleasant. Put my phone down. I don't actually do that. And I've been in situations where I would say, okay, God, if you get me out of this, I promise I'll be different. You get me out of this, I will function. I'll, I'll do what you're asking me to do. Just get me out of this situation. Anybody ever been there? Get me out of this situation, God, and I will not be that person anymore. Just one time. Just one time. Just once. James Ingram. One time. See, it, it doesn't work that way. God moves on our behalf after, after. Now, God has the ability to interject a miracle for anybody anytime he wants to. God can interrupt time, space, and nature to do the supernatural anytime, anywhere, any way with anybody he wants to. And I'm all for that. But typically, it's living the life of faith that brings you the provision. See, I didn't pray necessarily for my back, but I'm a man of faith, and I try to be, and I work to be. And so what God did for me this morning, temporary or permanent, I'm good either way, but what he did for me this morning was not because I begged him to do it. What he did for me this morning was after I have already chosen to establish a pattern of living a life of faith. And you might say, well, that's just coincidence, but it wasn't. I can tell you from me, it was me, it wasn't coincidence. There was no reason for it. Faith will produce in you, but it will do that after most of the time. Number three, faith in spite of failures frustrations, futility. Well, I can't do this. I can't live this life. I can't be this person. 
I'm not as good as that person. I'm not as holy. I'm not as righteous. I'm not any of this. I'm not as good as that person. I can't do this. I'm not capable. I'm not good enough. See, the heroes of faith in chapter 11, they weren't good enough either. They weren't always in line with God, and they weren't always good. If you, have, if you are on the journey following God in a personal relationship, you have dealt with frustrations. You have dealt with failures, your own. You have dealt with feeling like what you're doing for God and what you're praying and what you're believing is futile. We all have, and we all do, and that's okay. God can deal with our questions and our uncertainties, and we can still be called a son or daughter of the Most High God. You can still be a hero of faith, faith in spite of yourself, faith in spite of what's in your journey, faith in spite of what's in your past. Every one of us have things in our past that affect what we're doing now. And people don't even know about it. And a lot of times we can't talk about it. But it haunts us and it stays with us. And the hurt stays with us. God can take you there and get you there even though you have hurt and brokenness in your past. It's guaranteed. He's a specialist at that. Faith is enduring and continuing in spite of. Our faith is not in our own goodness. Our faith is in God's greatness. See, we change. He doesn't. Hebrews 10.35 says there's a need for endurance, enduring faith. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't throw away your faith. Faith is connected to faithfulness, and he is faithful in spite of. So I'm here to encourage you today. Don't quit. Don't throw away your faith. Don't think that it's discounted just because it doesn't look exactly like you think it should or like somebody else judges you by what they judge you by and how they tell you you should look. They don't live your life. They don't know you. God knows you. God is with you. And we all end up frustrated and feeling futile about the whole thing at times. I was uh, a youth pastor in uh, Chicago, in Chicago land, they call it if you live there, in Chicago land, and one of my, my best friends, probably my bre- best friend at the time, um, he was another pastor on staff of the church I was working at, he and his wife had a baby, they had had one, everything was great, they had a baby, and this baby, I told you this, this story one other time about 12 years ago, this, this baby his feet were clubbed, they were called club feet, and they were turned, both feet were turned completely upside down, inverted on the bottom of the ankle. So they both feet, literally the bottoms of the feet were facing up and almost toward the shin. And so that was devastating to all of us. And uh, it doesn't change the way you, you view the child or love the child, but you already feel the pain. And so it becomes devastating. And, and so we thought, you know, we believe, we're people of faith. We believe that God can heal this. And so we had a youth service on Wednesday night. We had youth services every Wednesday night. And we had a lot of kids, a lot of junior and senior high students. And so a lot of people there. And we said, his name was Tanner. The, the baby's name was Tanner. We said, here's Tanner. Here's the situation. And uh, we're going to pray. So we're going to take the next week, and we're going to pray, and we're going to fast. And they didn't know what fasting was, so we learned together. I probably hadn't done it at that point either. We're going to learn together. So we're we're going to fast. We're going to fast meals. We're going to fast days. Because the Word of God only gives us two or three things that can amp up our prayer. Fasting, which is sacrifice. It's the sacrifice part. And agreeing. That's about it. Sacrifice and agreeing. And so we did that. We said, we're going to agree. We're going to have times of prayer every day. We're going to every, get everybody we know praying with us. We're going to fast meals and days. And uh, several of us went the entire week, and we said, we're going to fast the whole time. We're going to pray. We had groups of students get together, several hundred students get together just to pray for Tanner in between the two Wednesdays. We said, next Wednesday, we're going to pray for Tanner right here and believe that God's going to heal him. And it wasn't a, a circus thing. It was, God, please show up. And so we begged God for a week, us and probably five or six hundred students. We begged God for a week. 
We sacrificed. We cried together. We prayed together. So we got to the next Wednesday, and, and we were all so excited and believed is God's going to heal. God's going to heal. We've got faith. We were seeing faith as an event. God's going to heal. God's going to heal. This is going to be awesome. It's going to be great. And so we had, we had hundreds and hundreds of people in our room. And so they were there. It was an auditorium that we used, and we had hundreds of students there. And I mean, there was a sense of God in the room. Like, maybe you felt that this morning. It was like that that night. Because people had prayed for a week, students. And if anything, God, you know, asks us to have the faith of a child. And uh, so, you know, and that, that age is relative, I'm sure. But just that blind faith of God can do this, and our students believe that. Because we had told them, I told them, God can do this. Let's believe for prayer. I hadn't guaranteed anybody it would happen, because you can't do that. But we believed, and we got together, and we prayed. And we probably prayed for 15 minutes over Tanner. Hundreds of people gathered around praying together. It sounded like it sounded like a train. Just a, the room was full of noise and prayer and praise. It was awesome. It was sobering and moving. And we prayed. And as you might imagine by now, nothing happened. Nothing happened. And we prayed again. Nothing happened. And so here, now it's my responsibility to tell these students why this didn't happen. And so I began to just tell them out of my own innocence and uh, you know, uncertainty, we can't determine exactly what God's going to do. We've done all we can do. God sometimes heals in different ways, and sometimes we say those things, and they're just coming out. We don't, we're not really buying into it. And I pray that for people every time now because of Tanner. When I pray with people, I always pray, God, however, any way you want to bring healing, you do that. So nothing happened. And we thought, well, and I said, well, maybe over time, maybe over time. So, you know, we had hundreds of students who were watching every week. How are his feet? How are his feet? How are his feet? How are no change, no change, no change, no change, no change. And it was heartbreaking. And could have been very devastating to a lot of people, and me included, because we put it out there and really believed, and uh, we did all we knew to do. But sometimes, and I'm sure all of you have dealt with this on your journey somewhere, sometimes there's something that we desperately want to happen. And we're right in it. We feel right in it. Our motivation feels right. Our intent feels right. And we pray, and we do everything we know how to do, and we cleanse ourselves if we need to, and, and we make our heart right, and we make our surrounding right, and we do everything we can. We get people praying, and nothing happens. That's part of the journey, and we don't have the answers for that. But let me tell you about Tanner today. Tanner's in his 20s, early 20s today. Tanner got healed through surgery. He's a semi-pro golfer today. And he teaches. He's a golf instructor. And so what I looked at and thought, God didn't do it. God used this surgery and this doctor and this medical practice and this surgery. He had dozen, probably a dozen surgeries. But God used everything in the process to get him where he is today. See, we, we limit God. We say faith only looks like this. Faith doesn't just look like your picture of it. Faith looks like God. And one of the things we consistently forget as followers of Christ is this. All things somehow work together for good for those who are in Christ Jesus. Somehow. Somehow the puzzle comes together. And that incident changed me. Like I alluded to earlier, now when I pray with people, I pray this for healing. God, use the doctors. God, use medicine. Use whatever you can use to bring healing. Because God gives people wisdom and actually systems wisdom to actually do good things that end up being His hand. We don't always recognize it as that. 
So God is able, and you're probably on the path to your need being met, even though you might not see the entire process right now. So God is able. Keep your faith in spite of what it looks like around you. Keep your faith strong in spite of how you feel. Keep your faith strong in spite of what everything around you is saying. Pursue God and His righteousness, and He will direct your paths. Stand with me, if you would, all over the auditorium, please. If uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask for the uh, altar workers to to come to the front if they would, please. So I do feel like there's a sense of a, of a need and to to make a commitment to God. This has nothing to do with us membership here or anything like that. Just some of you are in a position and and through the the entirety of the service through worship through the choir, through the word, you're feeling that sense of, I need to commit, commit, recommit, connect, reconnect to God. And that's what we're here for. These incredible people lined up are just here to agree with you for that purpose. We want to help reconnect you with God, and that's that power of agreement. Now, this is not an area of discipline. It's a place of direction. This is not to embarrass. It's to embrace. Because when we're in this room, we're family. We're family. We love each other in here. So you say, I need to connect, reconnect to God today. I need to commit or recommit to God today. I'm going to ask you just to step out from where you are and public confession, say, yes, I, I need that prayer today. As we begin to sing, just step out and allow us to agree with you in prayer. I'm going to uh, ask you to do one more thing, and we customarily do this here just as a way of encouragement. And See, what's out there hasn't changed. In the last 90 minutes, what's out those doors has not changed for you. That's why I tell you, get everything you can while you're in this room. And if, if, you, if, you're, if you feel God speaking to you, as I would say, compelling you, this is not for me, it's for you. Don't miss an opportunity to move if God is speaking to you that way. So I'm going to ask you to turn to the people on either side. If you're comfortable with this, turn to the people on either side. Say, if you want to go down and pray, I'll go with you. Lead them to a place of restoration today. You want to go down and pray, I'll go with you. Lead them to a, to a place of encouragement.
Let's give God, let's give God an ovation for uh, His goodness to us, His mercy, His love. I'm going to pray a prayer of agreement with you as we walk out. Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to know you in relationship. God, I, I thank you for allowing us to learn, understand, and grow in faith. We need that. God, I pray that you would uh, bless and give favor to everyone in the sound of my voice. Protect, lead, and guide. Provision, wisdom, understanding where they need it. We uh, cast our cares on you as much as we can, as we know you care for us. So I pray that you'll lift us up and hold us up as uh, people who are pursuing you, trying to stay on the path. So we commit ourselves to that purpose, God. Lead us and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. Ms. Jolie Justice, thank you for being with us. Mr. Jermaine Reed, thank you so much. Your wonderful guests, thank you.